Hey guys, Pirgi here. In this video, we're going to recreate uh, this uh, web design in Figma from scratch. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. So the very first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to create a frame, which uh, by my personal choice for desktop is going to be 14, 40 pixels of width, since uh, I believe it's a good size uh, for starting a desktop uh, page. And uh, you can see it uh, here under the presets. Uh, so you can simply click on desktop uh, and uh, we're going to rename this uh, to B2P website. And uh, we have uh, the base going. Now, the very first uh, thing which uh, I usually do whenever I start uh, a new web design project is to create uh, the layout structure. So we're going to go under layout grid, going to click on it. We're going to select uh, the columns since uh, this is going to allow you to work uh, in an organized uh, way. Now I'm going to add uh, 12 columns uh, simply because I'm used to the days of uh, working with uh, Bootstrap uh, and uh, 12 uh, is uh, kind of like the default that was uh, for, for Bootstrap. Uh, you can also go with uh, other values but uh, 12 is, is quite good, uh, all things considered. We're going to add some uh, margins on the left uh, and on uh, the right side. And uh, this is going to give us uh, a, a base. Uh, and as you noticed, I made the gray color a little, uh, a little subtle so it doesn't interfere too much uh, within uh, the design. I'm also going to make this uh, larger. And uh, the very first uh, thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, the very top uh, element. Uh, which uh, is going to be a uh, gradient. So simply going to go over here and uh, I'm going to <clears throat> essentially change the gradient to mimic uh, the original as much as I can. So it's going to go like this, increase the opacity all the way to 100. Now a nice touch that uh, we can give uh, to this section uh, is going to be double clicking, selecting the two bottom, uh, uh, basically the dots, uh, and then uh, I'm going to add uh, the logo, which uh, is uh, essentially going to be a text, uh, which is personal, and I'm going to increase the size uh, and then uh, copying the original style of uh, of the button so probably you want to go a little bit more like this and then add uh, a dot uh, <coughs> to this uh, design and uh, so yeah something around these lines we don't need to make it perfect uh, at the very first round we can always refine all the details afterwards and uh, the very next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to add uh, a text of uh, the email. So it's going to be support. And we're also going to basically add uh, a icon, which is going to be an email icon just right here. And uh, overall, this is uh, looking good as a base. Again, we can always refine the designs uh, as we go and uh, now what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to add the text which is going to be this one right here and uh, as you can see we have uh, the base going now I'm using uh, Satoshi for this one and uh, it's um, uh, I believe it's a free Google web font uh, not a hundred percent sure about it actually probably probably isn't but um, it's uh, a font uh, which uh, I recently found myself using a lot because uh, it's uh, really great uh, for UI design, uh, but it also works really well on, uh, on mobile. So the responsiveness uh, of this font, I think it's, uh, it's really good. So overall, just a great, uh, great package. <clears throat> and uh, what I'm doing here is uh, I'm actually emphasizing uh, one of the key words about this um, this landing page. So the colors are being used strategically and it's not just for visual decoration, although that also helps. 
and um, after that uh, I'm going to create uh, a uh, basically the bottom uh, sub uh, headline which is just going to be Lauren Ipsum font so again Satoshi this one is going to be medium compared to the bold uh, of the main headline and uh, this is going to, to really help uh, in uh, creating that hierarchy which is uh, what is uh, most important font size of 18 and now let's uh, go ahead and uh, create uh, the base uh, of uh, the button which uh, is going to be um, all the way rounded we're going to make the color blue so let's go ahead and uh, <clears throat> we're going to add also the text over here uh, if I found it so okay get started and uh, that'll work probably going to make a bold <clears throat> just to give it a little bit of more visual emphasis and uh, here we go all right now it's time to add the image on the right uh, together with uh, the supporting visual so I'm simply going to copy and paste it directly from here this is an image which I found on uh, freepick.com and uh, it's uh, one of my favorite resources for finding uh, images these days and uh, I can actually show you uh, freepick.com so I can literally search for person and you know you can enter anything any element that you want I can select this uh, this image right here and one of the really cool features about this uh, um, reality free site uh, is that uh, uh, it can essentially edit the image online now I don't really use the editor um, when it comes to these settings right here I just use it for the remove uh, background and uh, this is uh, so useful because uh, I can essentially remove the background uh, directly from the editor and then I can download it in a uh, high quality <clears throat> PNG or JPEG uh, usually of course if you remove the background you're going to download a PNG but this is this comes up uh, so handy and uh, the quality of the images on Freepik and I'm not sponsored by them by no means uh, I just feel that uh, it's such a no-brainer for um, for the most part you can use that for free I pay for the monthly subscription because for me it's a no-brainer like how much value it brings to my project and to the client's project of course which are then happy to pay premium prices so that's that uh, we have the image and uh, now we want to create also a rectangle on uh, the background I a little bit of corner radius I'm going to make it blue bring it below and uh, we're going to add a little bit of uh, transparency to this uh, change it from uh, to vertical so that this uh, there is a little bit of this aberracy but you know we're, we're gonna live with it for the sake of this tutorial otherwise i'll need to go on photoshop and manually go and uh, and update it but for the sake of this tutorial i think uh, this is going to to be enough uh, um, obviously if it's a client project you're going to want to work and, uh, and update this uh, and uh, now let's add uh, these uh, visual elements which uh, really makes uh, the design come to life now of course I, I copied them but uh, how does this like w w what is this how can you create something like this from scratch super easy use the pen tool and then uh, you can actually round them up and if you have a look at the linear it's just a, a regular linear gradient where you know you can uh, you can literally add the uh, three points so here on the top here on the bottom this one is going to be this one right here you can recreate the effect uh, really easily so very fast uh, really very efficient and uh, I'm uh, simply going to add uh, the other two from the original design directly 
here. And uh, yeah, this is going to give us some, uh, some visual interest and uh, just make the design uh, pop. And uh, as a designer, uh, I always like to just uh, hide uh, the grid uh, from time to time, just to see the, the actual design uh, in place. And um, yeah, so this, uh, this is looking good so far. Just notice these guys are outside of the frame. So we're going to bring them inside. And now I'm going to copy the logos as well. So you can find the logos uh, either directly from the client, they send them over, or a plugin like uh, this one here, logos. Vector logos, you can click on vector logos, you can find uh, you know anything, let's write meta. Um, of course, it's finding everything except for, for metas. Okay, here we go. And uh, I can simply click on it. Uh, and uh, the great thing about this plugin is that uh, it's all SVG, so vector. There's no like low res PNG uh, imagery in uh, our design files. So. It's always really important and useful. Now let's uh, go on and uh, create the, the main section for the bottom uh, images and sections. And I'm going to this blue, round it up, give it a little bit of a gradient. And uh, I'm going to go ahead uh, and add the cards to this. Uh, now, how can you create the, the card section? Well, first of all, I recently published a tutorial on my YouTube channel. So we're going in depth into how to exactly create the card. An easy way that you can uh, go about it, if you don't want to recreate a, a glass card from scratch, you can simply go on the community and search for, I mean, even glass should work. But if you look uh, specifically glass card, huh. yeah, for some reason it's uh, it's being quite slow, even though my internet is fast. Hmm. Anyways, you can uh, easily just find glass cards directly from the Figma community. Of course, it's not loading up, but there's like tons of these, uh, so. You definitely won't run out of, uh, uh, of options there. And now let's duplicate the text. I'm going to make it smaller, probably going to be 52, because this is the H1 and uh, has to be the most uh, pronounced uh, heading in 99.9% .9 of cases. The H2 is going to be the smaller version. So we want to maintain that uh, visual hierarchy for SEO. So I'm going to change the text. I'm going to add here. Um, you know, we, we can even leave this. It's fine. Then I'm going to add uh, another another section. I'm going to make it blue. Remove the fill, or you can keep it white. And uh, I'm going to change the color to this blue. Side. All right. Cool. Looking good so far, and um, what uh, we need is uh, another section right below where we are essentially going to change uh, the text. So I'm going to go with uh, this one right here, and uh, again, highlighting uh, only the words where we need. Uh, to emphasize, so we're not uh, really doing anything just for the sake of doing it. And then uh, I'm going to simply copy and paste this, uh, which is a very simple element, actually, if, you, if we dissect it. So what is this? It's, it's pretty much the same uh, uh, rectangle, just flipped vertically, and uh, we gave it uh, way less uh, uh, opacity, so as you can see, going to 10% opacity. 
this we're giving it some drop shadow and uh, it's just text elements and rectangles so nothing uh, nothing too fancy really and uh, you can always you know go ahead and be like add some of these uh, some of these elements in between for visual interest uh, and uh, to actually establish also a connection between uh, the different uh, elements and components so this is how you can uh, easily create uh, uh, um, element like this or a page like this so hope this video was helpful i'm a designer with 10 years of experience where i'm sharing my knowledge uh, here on uh, the channel so feel free to check it out uh, if you're interested in uh, learning more about figma and design in general and we'll see you in the very next video